Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's coverage here in Las Vegas. I'm Joffrey, host of the Cube with Dave Vellante, here for four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Fantastic event this year. It almost feels like a whole nother growth wave is coming. Gen 1 cloud, Gen 2 is here. And a lot of action's happening, certainly in the ecosystem, as part of the hype and buzz in the industry around AI. The reality is it has to be deployed. We're seeing a lot of those practical solutions around there. We've got two great guests here, Chris and Ralph, head of Industry Solutions. Chris, you're the Managing Director of Industries and Solutions Globally. Ralph, Director of Industry Marketing. Great to have you guys on. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Fabio. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Chris, we talk all the time. We've talked in the hallways. We've met one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Just the, the the partner ecosystem, just globally with within Ruba and the entire organization, has seen a massive change in the sense that's almost another level coming uh, of solutions. You're seeing new kinds of partners across the board, and an in industry where you guys focus on, you know, there are known domains. Yeah. Now, AI loves domain data, so we're seeing AI get a huge lift in industry verticals. Big part of the growth, and certainly they got a lot of data. And one of the show topics is the value of data. J.P. Morgan Chase was on the cube here. Lori Beer, she was going um, uh, all off on like, hey, I have all this data and I have been using machine learning for a while, but now I'm infrastructure. And so she's now uh, spent a lot with Amazon and it's just, it's they're very excited. I mean, what is the, the feedback you're getting here this year? What's the industry vibe? Um, is it still AI? I'm getting ready for AI. They're implementing it. It's practically AI. What's your take? So, John, as always, you got like 10 questions in that one question right there. But talk about data for a second. Yeah. So, you get data, and data's not new to us. You think yeah. back to, I think it was reInvent 2017 yeah. when we had Snowmobile and then yeah. Andy. Moving the data to the cloud is super important and has been for us for mm -hmm. almost 10 years. You can't, and we talked to customers and partners, you can't do Gen AI without what? without data in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And when you look at how the data is used and how it's being specifically tied to use cases, mm -hmm. it's industry specific. And we're always interested in how do we help our customers achieve the best outcomes. And the best way we can do that is helping them understand industry by industry, use case by use case, and then all the solutions per use case. And we're focused, just laser focused on the industry solutions that require the data in the cloud, especially when we're adopting Gen AI. Yeah, and one of the things I've, I've seen from some of the industry partners that I've talked to uh, in the hallways and in the cube is when you see the announcements, the Tranium 2, the S3 table buckets, for instance, massive innovation, some of the things going on at S3, the enablement that's coming on top of that of already good partners now become great partners. So the good to great is happening, and then the great are going uh, to the next level. This has been uh, uh, kind of a back to the roots for reInvent. We have the slew of announcements come in, that's floating all the boats. That's the rising tide. Ralph, what's your take on this? And Chris, you weigh in too yeah. around the technical enablement here. Yeah, the technical enablement, what, what we see and what we've demonstrated downstairs in the, the industry pavilion um, is, is really coming to life now. So we've got this year 47 industry specific solution demos on the use cases. 45 of them are powered by Gen AI, have got Gen AI deeply in them. And all of that we can't do on our own. It has to be with partners, mm -hmm. whether that's the Siemens on the uh, the automation and the, the manufacturing side, whether it's Continental on the automotive side. So all very advanced bio FM models like ESM3 with evolutionary scale, who were also on stage yeah, yeah. and were mentioned. So partners are absolutely critical to us, but what we've seen a lot of traction in is that it's now becoming real. Every single one of our demonstrations has got end customers behind them yeah. that have deployed, as well as partners as part of the ecosystem. Now, that, that was the theme of the keynote. Chris, what have been some of the launches this week that's been um, the partners have been gravitating towards? What are some of the highlights that they go, okay, I'm going to start putting that into action? Um, it's it's been amazing. I mean, there's been thousands and thousands of announcements, and uh, you know, I'm sitting with partners, and I'm asking them that same yeah. question. You hit Andy. Like, you remember what Andy announced on stage? Yeah. I mean, like he, yeah. he hit a, he about everything. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, what's resonating the most with me is the and says partners, um, industry specific. I just met with somebody uh, Neo J4, mm -hmm. and they focus on graph databases. I'm going to kind of add on to what he was talking about when yeah. you asked earlier. Graph databases, and they've been around for 14, yeah. 14 plus years. But now these announcements are coming toward them. Yeah. Graph database has never been more uh, more important than ever before, especially yeah. as they're doing fraud detection for banks and making sure that they can use these. And Gen AI and AI ML, it's all coming in their direction and all tied to enablement, not just for them, but the whole partner ecosystem. And then, and then you know, Emil at Neo4j, that's one of those companies that has been hit the right curve. It's just the pool, right time. Pool side, okay? Yeah. Pool side, we saw them just come out of nowhere. They hit escape velocity. Mm -hmm. So you have these kind of the rocket ships coming out, mm -hmm. but then in the domain verticals, 
that's been some real innovation going on in these verticals. Is there one industry that you see that's most, I mean, financial services is probably the most popular since they got a lot more cash to play with, but are there domains that you're seeing um, getting a real lift this year? Yeah, so we, we see the most advancement in healthcare and life sciences. Uh, we just had the innovation talk early on uh, today, and uh, when you see how we innovate with uh, the likes of GE Healthcare as mm-hmm. a partner, but also what companies like Merck and Lilly are doing, ultimately uh, across the whole value chain. Yeah, so from the drug discovery acceleration all the way to how they take care of patients. And this is really where the partners are critical for us and where we see a lot of traction, especially in the Gen AI space. I was talking to Andy uh, on an exclusive. You guys heard about that today. It's going to be published later. One of the things Chrissy mentioned is, is that there's still about 80% of uh, uh, on-premise activity has not yet moved to the cloud. Hit. And it's a direct quote. That's insane. That's what he said. And what he means is that it's going to go to the cloud because you look at what cloud's offering now uh, with the performance gains at the infrastructure level where SageMaker's now sitting and where Bedrock's getting a lot of lift. The stack is starting to be seen Amazon's playing some of their cards. They don't yeah. they have to hold the cards close to the vest, but you can start to see the cards. Infrastructure advancements, seamless model choice, integrated to practical AI. What's your reaction to that? Because a lot of these, these companies that want to connect to the cloud, they're going to start moving more to the cloud. How are partners reacting to that? Because they're going to be not only part of it, they have customers. Yeah. Well, in some cases, the opportunity is greater than 80%. Yeah. You know, you talk in the U.S., it, you know, it's probably 80, 80% left to move, 20, 25%, whatever. Yeah. You go to Bangkok, where I was three months ago, and they're maybe less than 5% moved to the cloud. And so the opportunities are different, but you look at practical AI, you look yeah. at other things, and it's it's becoming um, embedded in every solution. And I asked, a, I had a conversation last night about, all right, are we seeing Gen AI create more use cases? Or are we seeing Gen AI start to create more efficiency in the solutions and will we be focusing on Gen AI? Will we be talking about that? I think the ultimate answer is we're going to be outcome-based for customers by industry and even persona-based. Like the way we position the solution, the outcome, mm-hmm. whether we discuss Gen AI or not, will be dependent upon are we talking to a line of business executive or are we talking to an IT executive? I, you know, I think that it could end up being that we may not even be talking about Gen AI as it, when we present it because it could be like EC2. It's not like you wake up in the morning and go, yay, I'm selling EC2. It's embedded in the solution. Mm -hmm. So I think Gen AI will get embedded in the solution, will continue to focus more on the outcomes, and especially by persona. Yeah, Ralph, the the challenges that customers face are, are, are there. We're seeing it with customers going to the cloud. Partners driving the innovation. There's two, two parts to the question. Why are partners so important for driving the innovation? And two, what are the challenges of the customers as they face this buy versus build, boost the cloud or build it on-prem? There's, there's challenges there. What, what, are, what are the challenges and why are partners so important to drive that innovation? Yeah, partners are absolutely critical because they quite often over decades have been deeply embedded in the value chains in each industry with our customers. So they know the business processes, they know the data, and hence, for example, uh, we just made the announcement uh, um, with Comcast on 5G. Telefonica was early on in the year as the very first mobile network, 5G yeah. network that migrated to the cloud. Well, that was with Nokia, right? So yeah. you wouldn't do that without a Nokia and their domain expertise. And the same, as I said, GE Healthcare from a patient perspective and clinical workflow perspective is absolutely critical. Now, a good example of what matters beyond technology was, was brought to life with Santander. Um, they were on stage in our FSI innovation talk, and they said, look, the technology is great, but what the real differentiation is and what really makes it work for us is the how, the collaborative approach. Mm-hmm. The sort of the working backwards, the executive visioning, mm-hmm. and really half of the innovation talk was around how we as AWS support them, mm-hmm. and clearly partners are part of the ecosystem yeah. to that. And they facilitate a lot of that. I think in your area and industry, partners are, to your point, they have such domain expertise over decades. It's not like Johnny come lately, hey, I want to sell you something. They're deep in process on the end-to-end workload. That seems to be the value. Um, great call out there. Chris, I want to well, get to you. One more point on that yeah, one, though. Yeah. You look at how it's yeah. accelerated what we're doing. The shift to industries, we've evolved the industry starting January this year yeah. in kind of sales, marketing, pro-serve, yeah. trade, everybody. Our sales teams now, where we were maybe 30%, 40% partner attached on our deals, we're accelerating. Some countries are 80%, 90% attached. Yeah. Our sales reps are leaning toward partners more than ever because of that expertise. You've got Deloitte has 178 years of expertise. Deloitte, uh, Accenture's probably you know close to a century. They've been going to market by industry for way longer than we've been in existence. And so our reps are going, I need an industry expert. 
who do they call? They call them partners, partners now. Yeah. And so we're seeing acceleration and uptake in the partners. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, if you look at process, like if you look at Swami's keynote, Swami's day three uh, keynote was all about workflows. And this is where I think this nuance, but it's, it's important to point out that in the domain expert process, the value is gonna come from that business code Right, the, uh, the 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 knobs and the buttons that needs to be pushed. It's very enterprise. You know, as yeah. you guys know, in industry, it's very specific, um, and they're sometimes hardened. But then new things are going to come in. So you got to retrofit with AI the existing known end-to-end -end workload we have experience, but also they got to bring in the innovation, yeah. the software that yet hasn't been written. Whether Q modernized the mainframe code that Andy says is going to happen soon, or just new stuffs happening, but the old stuffs getting upgraded like super fast. Again, this puts an exclamation point on the partners. Yeah, and, well, and stealing a line from Andy, you know, from 2015, I think it's applicable today, especially with Gen AI, and a number of my conversations, it, the conversations with customers always start out with, okay, how do I drive cost out of the model? And they go, okay, I'm bought into cloud, which workloads first, and how fast do we move? And now it's like, okay, now how do I innovate? How do I transform? And mm -hmm. you know, we love, we're, we know a little bit about innovation and transformation and thinking big, and that's actually, we're seeing the same pattern with Gen AI as we did when cloud first started getting adopted. Okay, final word, give each of you a chance to talk to the audience out there, partners and customers. As the industry focus emerges, as you guys roll this out with the, with the new products, it's like a holiday time, everyone's got their gifts, all the new announcements, but it's clear this is just the beginning. What should they know about the focus? What's the, what's the plan? What should they expect? What's coming down the road? Right, we'll start with you. What's next for industry, it is industry partners and customers? So we are, we're continuing to double down on, on industry solutions and really focusing on the use cases. And I think this is for us uh, absolutely core, together with partners, working backwards, addressing very industry specific needs. And in my view, generative AI will be ubiquitous in this. And especially inference, inference at the edge will absolutely be there and you'll have a lot more there especially as we're broadening out the ecosystem, like for example with uh, AWS Bedrock's uh, marketplace now, bringing partners into yeah. the ecosystem much easier. Chris? Yeah, the, the use cases. I mean, it is all about the use cases. It used to be, let's start with a list of partners, yeah. and then it could be all over the map, but really now the rallying point is the industry-specific use cases. And yeah. you think about it as a flywheel. Yeah. It all starts with the customer. We work backwards from the customer. We have industry use cases, and then we have maybe multiple solutions around those use cases. And we could, we could have, say, for example, Redshift in one solution, Snowflake in, that say, in a solution for that, or, or maybe Databricks. We could have multiple solutions for use case. We get it to a consulting partner. They embed more ISVs and technology partners. They bring it to the customer as a SaaS or managed services offering, and we do it over and over and over again. And one example is take auto and manufacturing. And by the way, all of our use cases are published. If you can go to yeah. um, aws.amazon.com slash industries, you'll see all of our solutions and use cases. Auto manufacturing, we've identified 61 priority use cases. And it might be working with BMW or say Aston Martin. Any, at any point in time, based on percent propensity to buy models, one or two of those use cases might be applicable. In Aston Martin's case, they wanted to know how to prepare better for new vehicle launches using their data and getting insights, working with a partner called Data Reply and us. They increased uh, the conversion rate to 85% and they were able to predict the customers by 35. So they knew how many cars to build and where to supply them to what dealers with far greater accuracy, and that affects the supply chain, it affects the end user, it affects the customer, it affects the outcome. So your service model then is, here's the uh, proven solutions that we have as, I won't say templates, maybe that's a bad word, but like, here's some, some uh, use cases. They tailor them to the customer, the, par the partner does, and implement. Most, most, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, so, so we've, got, we've got an array of over 40 purpose-built services in our own right. Oh, purpose-built, yeah, roll purpose, out. Purpose-built, and then uh, over 450 industry solutions that effectively always have some components around partners. But on top of that, we've got 4,500 industry-specific partners across 11 competency yeah. programs. And so it's always a combination of them uh, and how we go to market uh, and getting it right. And so they have they can turn key products from you, yeah, yeah. and and sell their services and, around it and create Correct. like the Andy concept: take primitives, put them together in yeah. productized solutions, create a platform yeah. like Deloitte has a platform called De Converge Health that might deliver eighty percent of what a customer needs. Then they can take that, tailor it with yeah. twenty percent of the secret sauce, and then deliver a tailored customer for outcome. Not to put my capitalist hat on, but you know. The customer makes money by selling a better product, lowering their cost, making re revenue. The partner makes money for delivering good service. Yeah. It's, it's a great win-win.
as long as we deliver a better outcome for our customers, that's the key. Yeah, profit and distribution, I was going to say, great, great formula for service. Yeah. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I know we got Thanks for having us. Great. Thanks, Congrats. Like, looking forward to following up on the, what's going on in the industry. Again, hot air. We've always said domain expertise is the, is the new IP in AI because that's going to be critical. Guys, you guys are demonstrating that. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for having us. Okay, we are here at theCUBE. Shake your hand, of course. Not live, but almost live. I'm John Furrier. We'll be back more after the short break. <laughs>